Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicalclassroom.com in the topic of circular and satellite motion titled Case Studies Circular Motion. This uh, concept builder has three levels that each refer to a different equation for uh, circular motion. One is for speed, one is for acceleration, and one is for force. Uh, and it looks at the relationships present in those equations. Um, I'm going to, yeah. So let's get started with the apprentice level, which is called speed. Okay, and this is in particular for speed in a circle. So you know speed is, average speed is distance divided by time. Okay, well, this just takes a particular distance, the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, and the amount of time it takes to go around the circle once, which is called the period. Okay, and the period is a capital T. So it's a specific time, not just a general time. Lowercase t is a general time. So the velocity is how, how fast the object is moving in the circle. Um, we've got average speed here is actually what we're calculating. And assuming it's at constant speed, then that's its velocity at every point around the circle. So we look at two relationships here. We see that there is a direct relationship between velocity and the radius, and there is an inverse relationship between velocity and the period. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the concept builder. So in the concept builder, we get a question like this, which you've already seen several times this year. The circles the circle's radius in case A is twice that of case B. The period is uh, in case A is three times that in case B. How does the speed in case A compare to the speed in case B? All that information is right here and right here, so you don't have to read this, although it's good to understand what we're comparing here. But we can see that the period is compared to three times, this period is three times greater, meaning it's taking more time to get around the circle. Uh, the radius is twice as big, meaning it's going further. And so that's all gonna tie into our answer here. Well, let's remember really quickly our relationships. So as far as the radius goes, the radius is directly proportional to the velocity. So if it's got a bigger radius, it's got a bigger velocity. In fact, when the radius changes by a factor, the velocity changes by the same factor. If the radius is 10 times bigger, the velocity is going to be 10 times bigger. Then when the we see the inverse relationship here between period and velocity. Um, so when the period changes by a factor, the velocity changes by the same factor, but in the opposite direction. Let's apply it to this problem, and then we'll move on to the master level. So first off, we see that the period is getting three times bigger. So the period was three times bigger. Because there's an inverse relationship here, that means that the velocity is going to be changing by the same factor, but in the opposite direction. In other words, divided by three. The radius here we see gets two times bigger. The radius is directly proportional. So if the radius is two times bigger, the velocity is going to change in the same direction by the same amount it's going to be times two. So our final speed in case A is times two for the radius divided by three for the period. So it would be so that when you tap to select answer, you'd choose two thirds the size of case B. Okay, having to go further around meant it was uh, going slower or sorry, uh, taking longer to go around meant it was going slower. Having to go further meant it was going faster. And so those two things combined to give us two thirds the original velocity. So as we move on to the uh, master level, we're looking at something called its centripetal acceleration. So that's how fast does the velocity change? Because as something goes around in a circle, its velocity is changing direction as it goes around the circle. And we learned previously that that meant that the acceleration is pointed towards the center. Well, now we're going to learn how big that acceleration towards the center is. And here is how you calculate it. 
using the velocity that the object is traveling around the circle. You could, could call that its linear velocity. And the radius of the circle, which uh, this concept builder calls capital R, uh, our state's uh, equation sheet uh, uses a lowercase r, so I'm going to include that here. Um, so you'll see it either way. Most of the time I've seen it, it's been with a lowercase r in this equation, but capital R, they tend to be used somewhat interchangeably. All right, so we see that the acceleration and the velocity have a quadratic relationship. We see that squared for the velocity. Um, and we see that uh, since the radius is down here in the denominator, there's an inverse relationship between acceleration and radius. All right, let's move into the problem here. So once again, a very similar problem. You're talking about how the speed changes between case in A and B, the radius changes between case A and B, and you're asked how the acceleration compares between cases A and B. So we have to remember our two relationships, the quadratic relationship here, which means that when the velocity changes by a factor, the acceleration changes by the square of the factor in the same direction. And the inverse relationship between acceleration and radius. When the radius changes by a factor, the acceleration changes by the same factor, but in the opposite direction. All right, let's apply that to this problem. So we can see that our velocity is half the size of what it used to be. Um, let me get back here so I can get rid of these words. So we have somewhere to write. Okay. Uh, all right, sorry there, I had the wrong question in, and so I had to get out and change that really quick. <laughs> sorry about the arg and the pause. Um, but the speed in case A is one half that of case B. We can see that right here. Half of the, the case A has half of the velocity that case B had. So the velocity is divided by, sorry, divided by two. Um, since velocity is quadratically related to A, that means A is going to go in the same direction, but it's going to be the squared value. So we took the two, we squared it, and that's how much we divided the acceleration by. Keep in mind, if you were multiplying the velocity, you would multiply the acceleration by the square of the factor. All right, then we see that the radius got two times bigger, so the radius got two times bigger, times two, so that means the acceleration, well, what's the relationship? They're inversely related, so that means if r the radius is multiplied by two, the acceleration will be divided by two. Okay, so here we're going to be dividing by four and then dividing by two, so this is going to get four times smaller and then two more times smaller. 4 times 2, that's going to make the final value 8 times smaller, okay, or 1 eighth the size of B. All right, let's move on to the forces in the wizard level. Okay, so there we're dealing with a centripetal force. So uh, just like we had learned that as the accelerate, the velocity was going around the circle, that meant the acceleration is pointed towards the center of the circle. Well, the force that causes that acceleration has to point the same direction as the acceleration, so the force is pointing towards the center of the circle. Uh, we see F equals mv squared over r. Again, we have the situation with r where uh, this uh, concept builder uses r. My state uses a lowercase r, and I think a lot of textbooks do. So I'm going to keep both of them here. Uh, so we see we're taking the mass of the object that's moving around the circle. So whatever this object is out here that's moving in the circle, that is the mass that we're getting uh, for this equation. Uh, the velocity of that same object, how fast is it moving around the circle, and the radius of the circle. Uh, keep in mind this works for any, all these things work for any curved motion because any curved motion is a part of a circle. If something's making a left turn, that's part of a circle. Each point in that, each curve within that turn is a part of a circle. So any curved motion. All right, so we get three relationships out of this. We see that the force and 
the radius is inverse. We saw that on the last one. We saw that the uh, velocity was quadratic um, because the v squared of r is the same thing. Oh, by the way, we can also just write our good old Newton's second law equation, f equals ma. This would be the centripetal force, the centripetal acceleration, and this would be the centripetal force. You'll see some textbooks put a C in here to indicate it's centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. And finally, the new thing is we added this mass when we're doing force. And so that mass is right there. They're both in the numerator. So there's just a direct relationship here. So what a fun equation. We have a direct relationship or linear relationship. We have an inverse and we have a quadratic. All right, let's take do a sample problem here. Uh, and so in this case, we see three things. Uh, it never has all three things changing. So I picked the two things that were more confusing here, um, which are the velocity, which is quadratic, and the radius, which is inverse. The mass is linear. And so if the mass were to change, whatever change there is in the mass, you'd have the same change in the force. Okay, so uh, remember here that uh, if we have the um, force changing uh, here. The, uh, if the velocity is changing, sorry, we have a quadratic relationship. So when the uh, velocity changes by a, what is going on? All right, let's try that again. No. Okay, so when the velocity changes by a factor, I'm going to stop underlining because for some reason that's not working right now. When the velocity changes by a factor, the force changes by the square of the factor in the same direction. Okay, so the velocity, same as we did for acceleration. Radius, same as we did for acceleration. When the radius changed by a factor, the force changes by the same factor, but in the opposite direction. That's an inverse relationship. And finally, if you were to have the mass changing, when the mass changes by a factor, the force changes by the same factor in the same direction. All right, let's go ahead and work this problem here. So we can see that we have the velocity is gonna be half the size. So if the velocity is divided by two, velocity is quadratically related. We see that the force will be Quadratic means we square this, divided by 4, 2 squared. And if we have the radius times 2, because it got 2 times bigger, then since radius and force are inversely proportional, that means we're going to divide by 2. And so if we divide by 4 and then divide by 2, that means our total was we divided by 8. Wrote that a slightly different way since in the last one. In case that wasn't connecting, this might connect better. Um, but it means our net force in case A is 1 8th the size of the net force in case B. All right, hope you learned a lot about circular motion and the different equations we can use to uh, describe that motion. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.